Howdy everybody, Mr. Mark with you again. In this video, we're going to be looking at a couple of things concerning friction. And so on the table in front of you, you see a wooden block right here. And this wooden block is attached to a force sensor. So what this thing is, is a spring scale. Um, spring scale, just like what we've seen already. So the same kind of thing as this, but connected to my laptop so that we can actually read the force um, real nice and big on that screen over there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this block nice and straight and level, as level as possible, along this table kind of like this. And we're going to investigate what the friction force does under a couple of different circumstances. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click that record button on my computer. And you'll notice it says like 7 times 10 to the negative 15. I don't know why it does that. That's zero. Um, I'm going to bring this back a little bit. And you'll notice that the force now is reading not zero, it's 0.5. And then I'm going to pull it and slowly drag it at a constant speed across the table. And so it's pretty steady at 0.5 newtons. And so the reason that I have to continuously pull that block across the table is because there is considerable friction between it and the table. If I just let this thing slide, that friction force brings it to a stop, and it brings it to a stop relatively quickly. So notice that first the force measurement that I got for friction was about 0.5. So there's a couple things at play here. Number one, the force of friction depends on how hard the two surfaces are pushed together or the normal force between those two surfaces. And so I would get more friction if I push down on this block. It'd be a lot harder to push forward. Um, a common example of that would be like a pencil eraser. The harder you push, the more it erases. So I'm going to put a big one kilogram mass on my block, back it up just a little bit, and then I'm going to repeat this again. So remember it was 0.5 newtons to pull this thing against friction before, and now it's more like 2.8 newtons, give or take. And so by increasing the normal force, the force pushing the block against the table, that increases the amount of friction. And so rule number one is that friction depends on the normal force. Let's add even more mass. So there's another half a kilogram. And so if we do this, now it's moving at about 3.9-ish, give or take. The heavier it is and the more friction there is, the harder it is for me to pull at a steady rate. So let's change up another thing. The next thing that controls the force of friction is the nature of the surfaces. So right now I've got wood on this rubber lab table top. So now let's make it be a paper towel against a rubber lab, paper, lab table top. So I'm just gonna set this on a paper towel, kind of like so. Make sure y'all can see that. All right, now I'm gonna try to pull this at a steady velocity again. So now it's reading more like 4.2. So the paper towel actually increased the amount of friction um, between my, my, my two objects here. So paper towel on lab table gave me more friction than just block of wood on lab table. If we had something really slick like ice, then that number would be smaller. So the last thing that I want to show y'all while we're doing this, and for this I'm gonna to need to change how my computer displays this. Oh. I have to press the stop button first, and then I can change how my computer displays this. Um, and I'm gonna zoom in here in just a second after I show you. Um, I want you to see the difference between friction when it's not moving and when it is moving. And what I mean by that is I can come over here. Let me, let me actually turn back on the numbers for just another second. Press record. So I can start pulling on this thing right now. And there's a possibility that it doesn't move. So right now I'm pulling with about three newtons of force and it's not moving yet. And so not moving friction is referred to as static friction. Static is our word for still or not moving or unchanging. And so until I pull it hard enough, 
and overcome that static friction force, I can't make the block move yet. And so I'm gonna do that again, but this time we're gonna collect that over time so we can really see what it looks like. So let me click the stop button here. And right, let me click on the record button here. And I'll zoom you in here in just a second. So I'm gonna pull harder, 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 harder. Now it's, uh, uh, there it starts to move. Now it's kind of herky-jerky moving at a constant speed. Then I stop and that force goes away. So let me see if we can get a little bit closer to the screen here. And so there is a little herky-jerkiness right here in the middle. But notice that the force I pulled with steadily increased until we got to this point right here. And then that's where the block started moving again. And I didn't do a very good job of pulling at a nice steady um, speed. So let me see if I can do that again for you all. Um, you know, I'm, this time I'm going to leave the camera focused on the laptop screen. Let me push that back. Okay. So click record again. Alright, so I'm going to slowly increase the amount of force I'm pulling with and now it's moving. having trouble being still and watching what's going on the screen at the same time. There we go. Alrighty, so I increased the force and the friction force increased to match. Every single Newton I added, friction added a Newton to match it until we got to this point right here. And that static friction force was finally not strong enough to overcome the force I was pushing, pulling with. And then this friction force drops. And so this is me just kind of not being very, very smooth. Um, maybe if I take some mass off, maybe I'll try this one more time. It does take a little bit of practice to do. All right, so I'm pulling, 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 pulling. Now it's moving and it moves at a constant speed. I did a better job that time. Okay, and then I stopped pulling. So again, pull harder, 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 harder. Friction got bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger until it finally reached a maximum value. Then the block started to move and it friction became a constant value after that. So when something is at rest and something is pushing on it, but it doesn't move, it won't move, we call that sort of friction static friction. When something is moving or sliding like this, then we say that the friction is kinetic friction or moving friction. Um, I don't like the term sliding friction because that, that can get kind of ambiguous. And so we'll call that kinetic friction when it's moving across the surface. So that's kind of our introduction to physics. Um, I'll give you one more example of static friction here in just a second. But the, the thing that I kind of want you all to understand first is that the direction of friction is opposing the relative motion between the surfaces. So when I pull this to the right, friction is acting to the left. Now that doesn't mean that friction opposes motion. Let me give you an example. Think about this thing. This was moving along with the block. And it's moving with the block because the force of friction between it and the block holds it in place. And so there is kinetic friction between the block and the table. The friction between the mass and the block is static friction. And so whatever way the block moves, the mass goes with it, that's because there's static friction holding the two together. If I move the block too fast, or rather if I accelerate it too fast, then that static friction force isn't big enough and the mass falls off the block. And so if you've ever had something in the back of your pickup truck and you hit the gas too hard and it slid back in your pickup truck, that's because the force of friction that was needed exceeded the force of friction that was available. And so kind of the takeaway to get from that, friction opposes the relative motion of the surfaces, not just motion. And static friction can only be so big. It's variable until it reaches some maximum value, just like we had over here. Kinetic friction is always the same number. And that's kind of an easier thing to deal with. 
So there's kind of our introduction. We see some things, um, collect some data. Now let's start getting into the nitty gritty of it. I'll see you then. Ta-ta.